Ladies and gentlemen, the Colorado Mesa 1982 and 83 football teams are now members of the Armac Hall of Fame. Here to speak on their half, Coach Bob Cortez. <laughs> Bob, before you talk, I, I got to ask a quick question. Who's that blue team? They were in every highlight. You were killing them. I don't, I don't remember. Right? Well, they probably don't want to remember you either because you were putting the thumping on them. We had, we had good players. I want to I start off thanking the RMAC for uh, this opportunity. This isn't a Bob Cortese award. This is their award. I've already had mine. So I don't want to hear all about Bob Cortese. I, wanna, I want you to know that the team was the reason why we won, and the, and the team is the reason why we're here tonight. And God damn it, I don't cuss. Who said that? Huh? <laughs> Two of them. Oh, really? oh, okay, let me, I'm, I'm going to be short because they put, uh, first off, who put me after her? <laughs> Holy cow. How would you like to come up here and speak after Jill? Is that her name? What was her name? Yeah. Holy cow. Um, let, me, let me just tell you a couple of things. When I, I went to Mesa, the football program was not very good. And I remember the first day the faculty met the president, Dr. John Tomlinson was there, and he introduced a new faculty. And he introduced Bob Cortese. This is our new football coach, Bob Cortese. He will be the last football coach we hire at Mesa College if he doesn't win. We will drop football. Wow, what's that pressure, huh? <laughs> but things turned out. There's a couple of things that I want to share, and then I want to bring up the team and have them just give their name and where they live right now and recognize them. When the, coaching football is not rocket science. It, it's changed from when I coached, but there are two things that I found out about coaching football. One is good players. If you have good players, you got a chance to win. Good players and average coaches could probably win, and sometimes good players with average or poor coaches could lose. They could win, they could lose, depending on how much better the good players were than the coaches. The second thing is good coaches. If you have good coaches and average or poor players, you might win. I've seen coaches with less talent go out and out coach the other team and win. But I've also seen coaches that were very talented in coaching with lesser talent not win. So the formula for my, for my uh, success at Mesa was one, get good coaches. Make sure you got guys that can coach, that can recruit, that can teach, that have discipline, and then go out and find tough guys. Go out and find the toughest of the toughest and bring them in and put them in a program where Jeff Tootle called his father. I'm not staying here with that crazy coach. And, and then after two national championship games, he's hugging and kissing me and loving me and all that stuff. So, so I, wanna, I want to let you know that we had good players. Two years before I coached at Colorado, at Mesa College back then, at Mesa College I had spent two years at the University of Colorado. So I had big eight coaching experience as an assistant. And by the time that first class graduated from Mesa State, we had four or five guys that I thought could play, not be on the team, but could play and start at the University of Colorado. So we had our good players. Jeff Tootle was a great player. Dean Hagen was a great player. Russ Hodson was, a, I mean, those guys, those guys could play. They could play. I don't know why they were at Mesa. You know, I don't know why. Somebody missed the boat at Colorado. Maybe it was us when we were recruiting. But, yeah, all right, I know about that one. We had some of those too. Okay, what I'd like to do right now is bring up, first off, I'd like to bring up Tamara. Tamara, would you come up? Come on. Yeah. Let me tell you something. 
She did more to control me and keep me under wraps. She was my equipment manager. She was, she was our, they call them now, what do they call them now? They call them uh, on uh, football. Now they have them, they have uh, director, director of operations of football. She was our, she would tell me, coach, you got to have the bus here at 630 so that we can get them, you know, and she had it all organized for me. And then if, we had problems on the practice field. She made sure all the other managers were doing their job. So she was, she was very instrumental to our success. Yeah. You were. Oh, you were. She used to holler at me. She did. It was like my wife. Okay, let's bring up the players. Let's, I, all I want you to do is I want you to hold the microphone, tell me your name, or tell the, the audience your name and where you're living or, or where you're from. Come on up, all of you. Every player that played for me. Every coach that coached with me. Don Caldwell. Ray, come up here. Start it off. Love you, Coach. Lonnie Coglazer, Glenwood Springs, Colorado. Kevin Maloney, Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Uh, I don't know if I want him talking. <laughs> Linton Thomas, Aurora, Colorado. Yeah, stay up here. Stay up here. We'll get a picture. Tim Hart, Broomfield, Colorado. Where? Broomfield. Jeez, you changed jobs. Jim Poppick, Grand Junction, Colorado. Jeff Glass, Segura Hills, California. Hugh Long, Aurora, Colorado. Don Simonton, uh, Grand Junction, Colorado. And I want to say something about Coach Kralicek. Oh. Amen. He was instrumental in the offensive line. So thank you. He was, Coach Kral you know, talking about the good coaches, Bill Kral, we used to fight. I mean, and he was big and strong. He was a wrestler at the University of Colorado, and he was mean, and, and we used to fight because he disagreed with a lot of things that I thought we should do offensively, and he always won. He always won the battle. One time, I'm going to tell a quick story, and then we'll get him out. Good, good story. One time, I, Bill was my offensive line coach, and I um, thought I knew everything about the offense, you know, the calls and everything, but he did the offensive line. He was with me at four different schools, four different times I hired him because I needed an offensive line coach that knew what they were doing and he was the best of the best. And so I go out to practice one day and the offense is running a play and I call a play and we're, we're at practice and I hear, you know, there were offensive lines over, under, rabbit, you know, we had all these different lines, how you talk in the line of scrimmage to communicate with your teammate what type of blocking scheme you're going to use. And I hear WCK. I said, oh, God, I got to go back. And then we run some more. I didn't know what it was. And, and you know, I'm the head coach and the offensive calling the plays. And, so we go run a couple more plays, and then I hear WCK. I said, man, there it is again. Three or four times I heard it at practice. So I went in and looked at our playbook, and I'm looking and looking. I'm looking for what WCK means to our offensive linemen. And finally, I get Coach Kralichek. I said, Bill, what's WCK? And yeah, I don't know. Yeah. I said, no, what does it mean? I, I don't know that call. He said, well, we argued about this, you and I. You wanted to block it this way, and I wanted to block it this way. And so the line is blocking it the way I wanted it to be blocked, and they did without Coach Cortese's knowledge. That was, <laughs> that was their call, without Coach Cortese's knowledge. Is that right? Where is he, Tim? That's a true story. Okay, who else do we have? My name's Wade Andrews, I'm from Seattle, and the rule about WCK was we were never allowed to admit it to coach. No. <laughs> no, you lied, you just did. Jeff Toodle, Aurora, Colorado. Yeah. <laughs> Don Wisman, uh, Grand Junction. Hey, Don. Bob Kitty, Hilton Head, South Carolina. Former Marine. Before he came to me. Before he came to me. Oh. 
You know, every team's got to have a great quarterback. Now, this guy could have played at the University of Colorado, and he had the grades. I don't know why, but I got him and won a lot of games with him, and he threw one interception. It was my bad call. Really, it came from Coach Panunzio, by the way. I won't take credit for him. <laughs> throw it, throw it, throw it. And we threw it, and we lost the championship game because they intercept you. Went 181 passes without an interception. We're playing in Oklahoma City. The wind's blowing. We're winning. We're moving the ball down, and it was, it was third and maybe five, and... And we didn't know, we didn't throw very much. He only, he only threw about 12 passes a game. And I get from the press box, throw, throw it, coach, it's there, it'd be wide open, we'll score a touchdown, we'll win the game in two minutes left in the game. So we threw it, and he threw it up in the air, and the receiver was open, the throw was good, but the wind in Edmond, where I lived for a number of years, kept the ball up in the air for 13 seconds. <laughs> 13, I counted them. <laughs> And the defensive back came over and intercepted it, and we lost the championship. It wasn't his fault. It wasn't my fault. I'm going to call Coach Panunzio up. He's, he's now with the Philadelphia Eagles, by the way. <laughs> hey, I'm Bill Munson, and I live in Denver. And I had the pleasure of, of quarterbacking both these teams. And I tell you what, I love every one of these guys, every coach. The university was just an awesome place to be. So, uh, yeah, these people want to go home. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Mike Sellers, Golden. <laughs> I didn't even see you. Oh, oh, Mike. Aaron Tucker, Aurora, Colorado. Coach. Cedric Logan, Aurora, Colorado. And my brother Donnie, who's going to say a few things about the brothers that didn't make it, they're going on to the big team. Tim Donahue, Manhattan, Kansas. There are, quite, there are a few of our members that uh, have passed on. We want to keep them in our thoughts and prayers. And for all the other members that weren't able to make it, uh, we really appreciate uh, everything that you guys have done tonight. Thanks again. Thanks you know, uh, where's uh, Zarba's wife? One of our players passed away. And, and, and she, where is she? Is she? There she is. The wife of one of our passed away players decided to show up tonight and we're so thrilled and we're so honored that you were able to share this with us tonight. DC Caldwell, Manchester, New Hampshire. Don Caldwell, good coach. Ray Biggs, uh, Yakima, Washington. Ray Biggs, good coach. I don't know how many years he did scouting in the NFL. How many? 22. 22. After he left me, he went to the NFL. Okay, that's all we have. I don't have anything else. Thank you all. Thank the RMAC. 18 years. Uh, Tom Spicer, is he still here? Tom, thank Mesa for many, many years of, of happiness for me and some of these players up here. Thank you very much. Picture.